Okay, Chavra, Buchim Abayim, welcome in everybody. This week's parasha is Parashat Yitro. Now, it's a fascinating parasha this week because really Yitro is one of the two parashiyot in the Torah that are actually named by somebody who was at least originally not Jewish. Meaning we have Balak, right? Now we have Yitro. Now Yitro converted, became Jewish. But we have a parasha that is dedicated to him. As we're going to see, he wasn't just the father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu, but he gave advice to Moshe that he's famous for, that the Torah talks about, that the Torah recorded, that became his parasha. I'm not talking about the entire parasha Yitro, but I'm talking about what is identified specifically as the advice that he gave Moshe, he gave the Jewish people, that would affect future how really the judicial system seemed to run amongst the Jewish people. And for this, we record a special parasha in the Torah that is attributed to him, to this character Yitro. Yosef, we're going to learn something very interesting tonight. And at the end, remind me about the dog. We'll get back to it. Nezat Hashem. But in the meantime, let's get started. V'shem Hashem Naseh V'nasliach, let's get started. Who, what do we know about Yitro? Yosef, what do we know about Yitro? Who is Yitro? Where does he come from? Yitro is the father of uh, his wife. Father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu. What else do we know about Yitro? Well, we know, Rashi tells us, Yitro was originally a priest. Not only a priest, for he tried every form of idol worship in the world until... He decided HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem is the only one to serve. <laughs> so this is a very worldly person. He, is, he knows a lot of what's going on in the world. And be, despite all of that, after all of that, he comes and approaches the Jewish people who are in the Midbar. And he seeks out Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jewish people wishing to be part of them. Moshe inspires him with words of Torah and the miracles of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And he eventually converts. Not only does he convert to Judaism, but he goes back to Midian. Why does he go back to Midian? What is going to do in Midian? To convince people to convince. His family yeah, yeah. to go back to his homeland yeah. and tell his whole family to come join yeah. Akadosh Baruch Hu as well. Like Moshe and his kids? No, Moshe and his kids were already in the Midbar with the Jewish people. His uh, brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles, cousins, nephews, a lot of people. Okay, draws a special person. But if I asked you. Specifically, which portion of this parasha is the dedication that we remember Yitro for? Which part of it are, do we highlight oh, I his contribution to the Torah? Yeah, what is it, yeah, obviously, yeah. David? They, they give advice to Moshe to choose people to yeah. help him. To de- help him. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll prove to you what you just yeah. said, that he gave advice to Moshe yeah. about setting up a court system. court system. I'll prove it to you. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll, I'll, we're going to see it in the Psukim. It's obvious. But Rashi, in the beginning of the parasha, highlights this as well. If you look in the beginning of the parasha, it's page 394. Rashi tells us this fellow Yitro had seven names. One of his names was Yeter. Yeter. What does Yeter mean? It means extra or added. So that's when he became Jewish. But what is Yeter? Good. What is Yeter extra or added? So if we look in Rashi, in, a, in the beginning of the Pasha, Perak Yurchet Pasuk Aleph, Itro, he says, Sheva Shemod Nekru'ulo. He was called seven names. Reuel, Yeter, Yitro, Chovav, Chever, Kini, Putiel. Yeter. Why was he called Yeter? Al Shem Sheiter Parsha Achat Ba Torah, because an extra parasha was added to the Torah in his zechut, in his merit. And what was that parasha? Veata Techeze. What's Veata Techeze? So let's not get confused. Let's flip a few pa- pages. What you were just talking about. What was the advice that he gives Moshe Rabbeinu? So look, page 398. Perek Yurchet Pasuk Chaf Aleph. What does the Pasuk say there? Chaf Aleph. Look at that Chaf Aleph. Go a little bit down. You see that? Look at Chaf Aleph. Ve'ata techeze mikol ha'am. See from the entire nation. An Sheikhail, men of might. Yirei Elohim, those who fear God. 
Anshe Emet, those that are truthful, Sone Batza, they hate money, Vesamta Lehemen, you should place them over you. And he continues on to give advice, meaning pick judges that have all of these wonderful qualifications and they'll help you judge the Jewish people. Now I'm going to go through the background of that conversation. But Rashi is addressing, why was he called Yeter? Because this parasha of appointment of judges was delivered through him, it was contributed to the Torah based on his advice, and it was added into the Torah because of his merit. That's what Yitro is remembered for, for suggesting to Moshe that there should be lower levels of judges. Okay? Good. Clear? Good. Now let's go through the backstory for a second. How did that come up? Where did that come from? So if we look, let's go through the psukim. I want to just read through the verses so we see the backstory here. First, we have the whole story, how he came and Moshe was mekar of him. He talked to him and inspired him and all of that. We're not going to get into that now. But if we look at the page before, 396, Pasuk Yud Gimel. Let's just go through briefly through the psukim so we get this. That's lacha. Pasuk Yud Gimel. Vayimim acharat vayeshev Moshe l'shbot et ta'am. Moshe sat down to judge the people. Vayamod ha'am al Moshe min aboker ad ha'arev. They were standing to be judged by Moshe from the morning all the way till the evening. Why? Because he was the only judge. So imagine one judge and 600,000 men, I mean 2 million people, yeah. all need to be judged, and everyone with their court cases, it's going to be overwhelming. So Yitro saw what was going on. But Yomer said, What are you doing to the people? Why are you sitting by yourself? And everyone's standing next to you, above you, from morning until the evening. Vayomer Moshe lechot no, turning the page. So Moshe said to his father-in-law, Ki yavo elai am ledrosh elokim. The people come to me to seek out Hashem. They want to know if there's some question or some debate. They come over to me to figure it out. Ki elam davar ba'elai, when they have something to discuss, they come to me. Vishafatati ben ishu ben re'eyu, I judge between a man and his friend. Ve'odati et chukei alokim ve'et toratav. And I teach them the Torah, I teach them what's the halacha. It's not good what you're doing. You will become exhausted and worn out. The nation's going to become exhausted. You cannot do this on your own. To be one judge for millions of people, it's an impossible feat. Now listen to the advice. We begin on Pasuk Yutet, okay? This is where the advice actually begins. Atashma bekoli. Listen to my, my voice. I atzchai will give you advice. V'yelokim imach. Rashi says, but ask Hashem if it's good advice. I'm going to tell you what I think. Before you employ it, talk to Hashem. Okay. Okay. You will be for the nation opposite Hashem. And you will be the intermediary, meaning to say, if people come to ask you a question, you don't know the answer, so you could go and talk to Hashem and bring it back to the people. Continues the Pasuk, pasuk Chaf. And you will warn them about the rules and the Torah. And you will direct them, you will inform them the way that they should go, and the actions that they should do. Now, has he said anything that's a chidush yet? Is there any advice that's a chidush yet? What did he say in those last two psukim? You'll be the intermediary, talk to Hashem, give them direction. And then the second pasuk, which was chaf, we just read, you'll direct them in the Torah and direct them in the direction they should go. Is any of that a chidush? Is any of this novel idea, brilliant idea? That's what Moshe has been doing until now. That's what he's been doing until now. He's been directing them in the Torah. He's been talking to Hashem. None of what we just said is any major new idea. Everybody sees what I... And then the Pasuk says, Okay, now we get to a chidush. We're not going to go through the whole story, but then he goes on to say, go find judges that are qualified, set up lower courts, and this way, this is the real advice, this way you won't be judging the people by yourself. If there's a very hard question at the lower courts, and then they go to the next court, I saw the Rishonim speak out. They'll first go to the lower court. If they don't know the answer, it's like today. There's an appeal. You go to a higher court, and, then, and eventually, if they still don't know the answer, what ends up happening? Go to the Supreme Court. Go to Moshe Rabbeinu. Said they're fine. That's the real advice of Yitro. He advised Moshe to set up a court system to shoulder part of the burden of 
judging the people, and in doing so, so what's going to happen? Moshe won't become worn out. The people won't become worn out. Because imagine he was sitting by himself and all the people were lining up above him all day. By the way, I just learned the Gemara in Mesechet Sanhedrin. The Gemara tells us this, actually it's not here, it's actually later in the Torah, but it's uh, later in uh, Sefer Bamidbar, if I remember correctly, that the first, or later, the Sanhedrin, the great Sanhedrin that was in Yerushalayim was 71 judges. And later the Psukim say that Moshe was supposed to gather 70. It wasn't here. It was later. 70 people. So the Gemara deduces if it was 70 people plus himself, that's 71. So from there the Gemara deduces that the Sanhedrin is meant to be 71 people. But that's not okay here anyways. But the question that jumps out at us when we look at this right away, we have to say is, Yitro's great Chochmah was to give advice about setting up court systems. We know that. That's what the Psukim talk about. But where does that Pasuk start? That starts, if you had been looking inside, Pasuk. Yeah, but you don't know the answer to what I just said. That starts Pasuk. Chafalif. So look at Yutet and Chaf. What is Yutet and Chaf? You didn't look inside. That's the problem. Yutet and Chaf. What is he telling Moshe Rabbeinu? What is this all about? Listen to what I'm going to tell you. You will speak to Hashem and come back and you will direct them in the Torah. What do you think Moshe was doing until now? The same thing. That's not, if you would have looked inside, you'd see you're wrong. What does it say? Chaf Aleph is when it begins. Go find judges that are fitting. Set up levels of judges. Right, different, uh, more more significant judges. A little lower, a little lower, and then you'll be on top of all of them. Where does that start? That's Chaf Aleph. Yetet and Chaf. You'll be in opposite Hashem, you'll speak to Hashem, you'll come back to the people. And then Chaf tells us, and you'll direct the people in the Torah and mitzvot the in the way that they're supposed to go. What, what's, what's the point of that business? Alright, so Yosef wants to say it's an introduction to his speech. What do you need that for? It's so unnecessary. And Rashi himself says, why was his name yet there? Because there was an extra parasha. And Yash, what was that parasha? The parasha of judges. He doesn't mention these psukim because this is nothing to do with judges. So why is he saying this? Because he wants to train people first. What do you say? What do you say? He, he wants to talk to Hashem and train people first about the, what to do and everything. Okay, so David's saying, but to be judges? Yeah. All right, David's saying very interesting pshat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's saying this has to do yeah. with his command about the judges. judges yeah. Train the people to yeah. train the people to be fitting to be judges. Yeah. The only problem I have with that, I'll tell you, is that if that's true, why does Rashi say the parasha of judges starts from the Atata Chazeh? Really, it should start from the first, from Yutet, because that's part then of the he story. Give advice what to do. He give the assignment. Oh, but I'm trying to say is, yeah. if it's associated with the instruction right. and advice about judges, you should start from Yutet. You shouldn't start from Chafalif. So why does Rashi, in quoting this long-standing advice of Yitro, start from Chafalif? So it seems to be Yutet and Chaf is something else. But the question that we have to ask is, what does that have to do with his instruction about judges? Why is it brought here? So Yosef wants to say it's an introduction. We'll see the Gemara says a little more than that. There's some significance in this verse. Actually, a lot of things we'll get to. Fascinating. He was telling him a lot more information than face value. A lot more instruction and suggestions than what the Psukim actually lay out clearly. And the Gemara and Bab Metziah were about to see. Fascinating. Listen to this. Now we're cooking. Now we're getting busy here. Yosef, now you can listen. I didn't bring... I didn't bring you a Gemara for you, so don't worry, I'll read it to you. But this is amazing. Listen to this Gemara. Now, we're going to probably finish half the class today. I'm just saying, because really there's a Ben Yada here, amazing. Two parts. We'll do one part tonight. The other part we'll probably only get to on Shabbat or Sunday at the Lunch and Learn. But it's worthwhile. I don't want to go through it too quickly because it's amazing ideas that we're going to get to tonight. Amazing, beautiful stuff in the Ben Yoyada. So the Gemara tells us, actually in this verse, Pasuk Chaf, I'm going to read it to you again. This verse, there's a whole bunch of things that Yitro was referring to that he didn't say clearly. All kinds of suggestions that the Jewish people should be more careful and employ. So let's read the Pasuk again before we see this inside. You will instruct the people et et 
the Chukim literally is statutes or rules and the Torah. Now, that sounds like teach them the Torah. Fine. But then look at the next words. Well, so that's what David is saying, but let's see what the Gemara says. Hold on. Now look at the next words. And you will inform them of the way that they should go in it. And the deeds, the actions that they should do. So the Gemara tells us, as we'll see in a moment, each of the parts of this pasuk was a different direction. Each one was an instruction about a particular detail that's not listed, but is referred to by each part of the pasuk. Fascinating. Listen to this. The Gemara says like this. It's like a game almost. Listen to Fascinating. The Gemara says as follows. The Gemara there is talking about a story. I'm not going to get into it right now. The Tani Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef teaches. Vehodata lahem. When it says in the pasuk, Vehodata lahem. Everybody sees Vehodata lahem. What is that referring to? Ze Beit Chayehem. This is, what is Beit Chayehem literally? The house of their life. House of their life. What does that mean? It doesn't say what it means. Comes Rashi. Beit Chayehem. In Vehodata lahem. Beit Chayehem. What does it mean? Lilmod lahem umanut parnes bo. Teach the Jewish people a profession. Bet Chayehem, that they should be able to live with it. So, in Vodat Alehem, says Rav Yosef in the Gemara, it means the Jews should learn a profession. Okay, let's continue in the Gemara. Et Haderech, that's the next words in the Pasuk, the way. Zu Gmilut Chasadim, says the Gemara. Teach the Jews to do Gmilut Chasadim. What's Gmilut Chasadim? Acts of good deeds. Good deeds. Okay, now is that Mephorash in the Pasuk? No. But the Gemara says, Et HaDerech refers to Gmilut Chasadim. Yelchu, what is Yelchu? The next word in the Pasuk. Ze Bikur Cholim. Visiting the sick. Yelchu refers to teach the Jews to do Bikur Cholim. Ba, says the Gemara. Yelchu Ba, what does Ba teach us? Zukfura. Teach the Jewish people about burying the dead. Okay? So, hold on before that. It's a good question. What is the deeds? Zehadin, teach them about judgment. Asher Ya'asun, what does that teach us? Zulifnim Mishurat Adin. This teaches us that the Jewish people are supposed to be trained. Lifnim Mishurat Adin. That even though technically I could be tovea you for something, be upset at you for something, I should be more easygoing. I should be Lifnim Mishurat Adin, beyond the letter of the law, not treat you so harshly and so exactly. Okay. So the Gemara goes through and explains the, the different details. The Gemara goes through and explains, really, they seem to be inclusive of each other. But right away, we just have to stop for a second and say the following. The Mepharshim all comment and say, how is it that we see these ideas emerging from those words? Right. Meaning each of those <coughs> words seems completely unrelated with those ideas. So the Marsha gives a pshat here. Ben Yoyada gives a pshat here. We're not going to focus too much on that right now. But they say pshatim. But however it comes from those words, we'll take the Gemara's word for it. Gemara says it comes from those words, fine. Why is Yitro telling Moshe that the Jews should learn profession? Let's start off with that. The other ones we'll have to get to probably on Shabbat or Sunday. What does it have to do with anything? You're the guy who's going to instruct the Jews and give them advice about judgment, about courts, a court system, levels of judges. Why are you telling them, like Rashi learns and the Mepharshim speak out, Beit Chayehem, how to make a livelihood? What does that have to do with judges? It's a strange thing. He's talking about the judges that are going to judge the people. Good, I hear that, but that's not what the Gemara is saying. The Gemara is saying that Yitro, in the words, in the first part of the Pasuk, that we said, what does it mean? Teach the Jewish people. The Jewish people, Bichlal, Bichlal. The Jewish people, Yitro is saying, I give good advice. I know more than just the court system. I also suggest, and this is before the court system is even introduced, I give you advice, the Jews should learn Parnassah. We need Jewish doctors and lawyers, electricians. We need Jewish professions. What does that have to do with the whole story at hand? It's so random seemingly. So I'll tell you, the Ben Yoyedas has been amazing here. What do, what do, what do you think? 
because if they learn those profession and they are in the game and they feel it, they can judge people. Better. What do you say? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What are you saying? If they, if they, <coughs> they, they, they go make money. Who and makes they, money? The Jews. The Jews. Yeah. And they are in it and they have experience. And then they feel the problem better and they can judge people better. What does that have to do with judges? Easier on them. Who could be easier? The judges. Why will they be easier? They have experience. They, they know. They feel the problem. Are you saying the, the judges field. should learn yeah, professions? Yeah, yeah. You're saying the judges should be familiar with different professions. Yeah, yeah. So when the doctor shows yeah, up, yeah. who's upset at his office, yeah, yeah. or the electrician's upset at his employer, yeah. they understand the yeah, business. Yeah. It's a fascinating idea. Right. You hear what David's saying, Chevra? Yeah. The judges should learn the professions so they're familiar they when the judges show, yeah. when the they people come in, the they'll feel the issues of yeah. the litigants better. Right. Beautiful idea. But the Ben Yoyada says something here. Anybody else want to add? Yosef, what do you see? Amazing. <coughs> Very interesting. We're going to get to part of this. There's an entirely different section, which we're not going to get to tonight, but this first section is such a big yesod, and remind me about the dog. It's such a big idea here. Very interesting idea. I'm telling you, fascinating. He explains, why is it this idea? He explains, why was Yitro saying Bechlal on the Jewish people you're saying that the judges should learn the professions he's saying Bechlal which is the implication of the Gemara that Yitro is saying Jews should learn professions so he says why? why is Yitro suggesting that now in the parasha of judges what does it have to do with the parasha of judges? <coughs> I'm going to read it to you Ach he says like this it's difficult so first question he asks is, if you're referring to people should learn livelihood, you could have just said chayehem. The Gemara says bet chayehem. Bet chayehem means a house of their livelihood. Why does the Gemara say a house of their livelihood? That's a strange language. You want to say livelihood, you could say chayehem. That's livelihood, but bet chayem, what does that mean? Venerally, what's that? You'll make for your house. Huh? Venerally, b'siyat d'shmai al pima shakatav b'shem maharad zal. He quotes a fellow whose name was the Maharad. And the Maharad says the following, Ma in yan dvarim elu hacha bedivrei Yitro. What does this have to do with the instruction of Yitro about judges? His main advice is to appoint judges. Right. So why is he also giving advice that people should get jobs? And it sounds like your mother, get a job, right? Why, what's, the, what's that all about? <laughs> so he explained the matter as follows. It's an amazing idea. He says, his suggestion was in order to limit the claims and the court cases that would come in front of the judges. How? They are busy working. How? The are arguments. Listen to this amazing idea. Because the usual thing in the world is as follows. People that are not busy. People that are wasting time. People that are not doing things that are important. She'en lahem esek, they're not busy with things. Mit orerim la'asot tfi'ot v'den v'dvarim ze'im ze. They begin to fight with each other. People that have too much time on their hands, that's the people that start to kvetch and complain and get upset at every little thing that other people are doing. V'al davar kal ya'asu meriva v'den v'dvarim. And about little and unimportant things, they create all kinds of, what? The condo board. The condo board, I was going to use a different terminology, but it's not nice, so I'm not going to use it. But the point is that they're the ones that every little issue they start to make problems about. Ki batlanim him, because they are batlanim. How do you translate batlanim? They're not busy. Umamtsi'im lahem dvarim la'asok bahem. So they find things to be busy with. It's unbelievable what he's saying is so true. They find things to be busy with, says Ben Yoyada. This is the, ra- the Maharadi's quoting. Hen mitzad nizakin, hen mitzad harufin, you damaged me, you embarrassed me, you bothered me. They find all kinds of really unimportant things, but that's something they want to be busy with because they're not busy. 
Afa al Ken and therefore Afa Pishim Nelahem Dayanim Arbe Yitro is saying like this even if you have many many judges Loya Spikula Dunet Dinehem it won't be enough to judge everyone's court cases if they're bored because if they're bored and they're not busy what's going to happen there will be way too many court cases anyways Ach Imhem Baale Melachot but if they have jobs if they're doctors and lawyers, electricians and teachers, so then what happens? It'll be difficult for them to leave work. It's like when you're called for jury duty. Nobody wants to go to jury duty. But why? Because you're so busy with your job, hopefully, you're doing important things. It's annoying to go to jury duty. You don't want to go to court. You're busy. They don't want to deal with the court and judges. And therefore what will happen is, even if I have some reason that I want to take you to court, I'm upset at you, what am I going to calculate to myself if I have a job? I'll just be mochel. If it's not a big deal, I'll just say, you know what, forget about it. Those $20, I'll let it go. I'm not going to take you to court. Why? Because I have a job and I'm busy. And then what will end up happening is, So Yitro suggested, make the Jews get jobs. Let them be involved in work. Very interesting idea, by the way, because they're in the desert somewhere. So get a job. Okay, what are you going to do? You'll be a bird watcher. I don't know. You'll do something interesting. I don't know, whatever. Just to keep you busy. They won't just be batlanim, wasting time. There will be less claims in court. And then there will be enough judges to judge them. Otherwise, there won't be enough judges. So the Ben Yoyada says, that's the words of the Maharad, as he quoted them with a little bit of, of in, increased words. When the Gemara writes, Bet Chayehem, why does it say Bet Chayehem? What is it saying? Ki Bayit Kai Alachanut. Bayit doesn't mean a house. Bayit means a store. He says, Bayit in the context here means a store. Makom Shosebo Aumanut. It's a place that you do your profession. It's the doctor's office, it's the lawyer's office, it's the electrician's uh, car, I don't know, the truck. He's not going to be able to leave it to go to court. And this will minimize the court cases, the claims in Beit Din. So what was Yator really saying, the way that we're learning now from the Marad, the way that Ben Yoyada is quoting, this actually is very connected to the advice of appointing judges. What's he saying? I'm going to tell you need more courts, Moshe Rabbeinu. To judge all the people on your own, it's impossible. But even if I appoint thousands of judges, if the rest of the Jewish populace don't have things to be busy with, they don't have jobs, they're not doing productive things, what's going to happen? All day long they're looking for courts. All day long they're looking for things to do, which means they're always looking. The guy offended me in a tiny way, I'm going to bring you to court. You scratch my thing and I'm got every little thing is going to become a court case. So his first suggestion was like Kodem Rufuala He said, in order not to get into that issue in the first place, what do I suggest? Let the Jews get jobs. Let them have professions in which they'll be busy. And now that they're busy, they won't want to leave their job to go to court. So if it's not a significant kind of court case, they'll leave it be and they'll be mochel. And in doing so, the judges that I'm suggesting you have afterwards will be sufficient to judge the Jewish people in what actually is important and what's actually necessary. It's an amazing idea. And this idea, I think we find it bismanenu all the time. Who's the, the guy, the biggest complainers, the biggest fetchers, the ones always constantly looking to make problems? Because they're not busy. Because they're not busy. So the condo board. The condo board, the problem is, people are not busy. Marisha Shiva always used to say, there's no, many Dolim used to say this, that there's no such thing as retirement. What does it mean? You can retire from your profession, whatever that is, whether that's chewing gum or being a doctor. But the point is, you're never going to stop working. You're always going to do something. Now, maybe your work will be babysitting the grandkids, but that's work. The point is, we always need to be involved in something that's productive. It's not healthy for people just to stop. Rosh Hashiva used to say, or Bezwag used to say, when people retire, they die. He used to say, what happens is, is that people who retire and then they just sit at home and lounge in a chair all day, they're not productive, there's no element that's motivating them in life, and eventually they just pass away because there's no growth, there's no opportunity, there's nothing that they're doing productive in their lives. 
We can never retire. So it doesn't mean you can stop working in your profession, whatever that is, but then you get involved in something else. So some people get a dog. That's what I was saying before. Keeps them busy. Yosef told me this. He told me himself. He says, either I'm going to sit at home and swipe on my phone, play on my phone, or I'm going to work with a dog. You know what, Yosef? I think you're right. Because you're busy with something productive. It keeps you busy. And you're taking care of somebody. And that's why you're not suing anybody. Baruch Hashem. Maybe you get involved in community work, which Yosef does as well. The point is, when we retire from whatever it is that we're doing, we don't just stop. Cease, that's it, we're done, we don't do anything else. Has shalom. That's not the way it is. And Yitro understood this, and he's telling them, you want the judges to be able to be sufficient? You can't have such an overwhelming caseload of cases of judgment. How are you going to do that? Make sure the people have jobs. Make sure they're busy. Doing productive things, and in this way, it'll limit the amount of court cases that are going to happen. We're going to stop here, stop a couple minutes early, but uh, Hashem, there's an entirely another section of this Ben Yoyada. We'll get to God willing on Shabbat or Sunday. Yeah. Ben yeah.